Well, hey everyone. Um, I know I haven't filmed a video on the truck in a while, so I figured I would go ahead and make one. And also, this is the first video to be filmed with my new camera, which is a Sony Handycam. Uh, I'm not sure which model number, but I'll post it in the description or annotations or something. But anyways, we'll go ahead and start it up. As with most F-150s, you have the remote start. And the keyless entry pad. I do apologize for the air being ridiculously loud. There we go. Go ahead and back the truck out. It is dark outside, and I apologize, but um, I'll turn on the interior illumination and you should be able to see okay. There we go. You can see your reverse backup camera there. And I apologize if my voice sounds a little bit funny. I'm suffering from springtime allergies, which is no fun, but it's whatever. Um, as you can see, the truck has 27,546.4 miles and is uh, running fine. But one thing that did actually happen is we were on our way to... Um, Arkansas my dad and I were to help my great-grandparents move and I went to pass someone and the truck just it, it wouldn't go it redlined about 3500 rpms or so somewhere around there and uh, That was that was all it had to offer so um, I Backed off of it and then punched it again, and it was fine so uh, that was good but then I went on the way home to Pat, or actually by this time Dad was driving. I went on, um, well on the way home, I went to pass someone, or Dad did, and the truck just started shaking ridiculously badly. And that's not the first time this has happened. It just was shaking so bad. And um, so what we found out is that the there was a part of the intake on the front and I know you won't be able to see it but I'll point you to where it is somewhere down in this area here uh, there was a panel that was part of the intake and water would pool in it and it would cause humidity to get into the turbochargers which is obviously a bad thing and it would cause the engine to shake, and it was just bad. Um, but other than that, the truck has been fine. That was fixed. Uh, Ford covered that, obviously. Go ahead and do a walk around. Um, tire wear is... Well, let me turn the wheels, because you can't see it. One thing I am noticing, this camera does very well at night. It picks up the, uh, the truck well, and the truck is black, and it's in the black of night. As you can see, tire wear is, it, they're definitely wearing. Uh, it may need new tires before long. Um, the trip to Arkansas we took, it was raining on the way there. It was like five o'clock in the morning. And uh, we actually did a little bit of hydroplaning. That was terrifying. That was the first time I'd ever legit hydroplaned in a car. And I didn't like that. But uh, it's, it's doing okay. Um, I don't particularly like to drive this thing because it's so long. It's based on the long bed platform, but they just added the room to the cab. As you can see with the ridiculous amount of leg room back there, you also see the ambient lighting and stuff. But uh, it's, it's very, very long. And this isn't the longest configuration they can be. They can actually be longer. Here you can see the exhaust. It turns black a lot because of the turbocharger. It doesn't, it blows a lot of black soot and stuff like that. So it's kind of annoying and difficult to keep clean, but that's part of having a turbocharger. Same with my car. Um, wheels, uh, they're not curb scratched, surprisingly, because I've hit some curbs in it because it's so freaking long. 
There's your EcoBoost badge. I like where they put that on this truck. I think it's a really cool place. Front end um, is actually wearing out. Uh, the, the bottom bumper down here is getting quite a few rock chips in it. I doubt you'll be able to see them. Well, there's one right there. You can see kind of, if I put my hand there, you can kind of see it. Um, and one of them actually has a tiny bit of rust in it, which isn't good. But uh, the truck in town gets around 13 miles per gallon. And then once you get out on the highway, it's, uh, depending on how you run it, you can get anywhere from 16 up into the 20s, running 85 with the air, or not 85, 75 to 80 with the air on, it'll get closer to 16, but if you run maybe 65, you can get over 20 miles per gallon. Right now, this has been a town tank, and it's getting 13.2, which is not all that great. Um, some other things I've noticed with the truck over the almost 30,000 miles is this transmission, although it is really nice and good, it's a little jerky. Um, it's just kind of, it kind of lunges when it changes gears. It's not a smooth transition as the Jaguar is. The Jaguar, I love the transmission in that car. It's wonderful. Um, one of the best I've ever used. But this one is a little jerky. Manual shift mode works pretty well. I mean, for, I mean, on a pickup truck, you don't really use it. But it, it does pretty well. You can hear, sounds pretty good for a V6, sounds pretty throaty. And you get a turbo blow off valve too. Sounds very different than my car, mine's more of a noise and this one just kind of like a, like a, it just sounds like a little bit of air blowing, mine's more pronounced. But maybe that has to do with the fact that this one has twin turbos, I don't know. Um, but I guess that's really pretty much it. Not a lot else to say. I'll go ahead and put it back in the garage. Also, parking this in the garage is also a challenge because it's so long that it just doesn't really particularly enjoy being crammed in a garage. You can see you have to kind of just guess. It's a lot. Of, it's a guessing game driving this truck. At least for me, it is because I'm not used to it. But anyways, that pretty much sums it up. Hope you guys have enjoyed, and thanks for watching.